Let's look at a quick example of an actual natural bond orbital calculation for the methane molecule. The structure of methane is shown here, and the first thing that the NBO program does is to calculate the natural atomic orbitals based on this structure. From the table, you can see that it distinguishes between core orbitals, the 1s orbital, valence orbitals, like the 2s orbital, and then what it calls Rydberg orbitals, which are these higher unfilled levels that are necessary to make the calculations mathematically sound. The occupancies mirror what we would expect for a carbon atom in a promoted electron configuration, where we've taken one of the electrons from the 2s orbital and promoted it to one of the 2p orbitals. So we have approximately two electrons in the core, which we would expect, and then we have approximately one in each of the 2s and the 2p orbitals. You can see the valence 2p is here, here's the second valence 2p orbital, and the third valence 2p orbital. The shapes are exactly what we would expect. The 1s orbital is very close to the nucleus, the 2s orbital is somewhat more diffuse, and if we look at the 3s orbital, the 3s orbital is even larger and starts introducing some weird artifacts. The 2p orbitals look exactly like we would expect as well. There's the dumbbell shape and alignment along one of the axes. The next one is at right angles to the first, and the last one is at right angles to that orbital. These core and valence atomic orbitals form the major inputs to create the hybrids. And in the actual results, we can see these tabulated with the energies for each. Using the number of electrons in each of the atomic orbitals and the expected charge at each nucleus based on the identity of the atom, the NBO method calculates a natural charge. This is a partial charge for that atom based on the occupancies of these atomic orbitals. Next, we have the natural hybrid orbitals, and these are constructed from those atomic orbitals. Notice that these percentages reflect what we would expect for the hybridization of the carbon and methane. Namely, each hybrid is 25% S and 75% P, which is consistent with the idea that hybridization isn't relevant to the hydrogens. They bond using their 1S orbitals directly. If we look at the shapes, they're exactly what we would expect. Here's the sp3 hybrid on carbon, and the 1S orbital on hydrogen looks exactly as we would expect as well. The occupancies are interesting. Notice that there's slightly more than one electron associated with each hybrid orbital. This is consistent with the charge analysis, actually, and the fact that the carbon has a negative partial charge. There's greater electron density and a higher occupancy on the hybrids on carbon than there is in the 1s orbitals on hydrogen. The next stage is natural bond orbital analysis, and here the natural hybrid orbitals are combined to form bonding and antibonding combinations. The bonding combinations have this label BD, core orbitals have the label CR, and these tend to be undisturbed atomic orbitals in the core of the atoms. BD star orbitals are traditional antibonding orbitals, and these RY star orbitals are the so-called Rydberg orbitals that we need to make the calculations mathematically sound but don't really have much chemical meaning. First, let's check out the occupancies. Notice that the occupancies of each of these NBOs is darn close to two. This indicates that the Lewis structure, which puts two electrons between each carbon and hydrogen, is a very good representation of the molecule as a whole. If we look at the shape, it's exactly what we would expect for a constructive combination of the 1s orbital on hydrogen and the sp3 hybrid on carbon. The nub on the back side of the bonding orbital is a little bit smaller than the nub in the original hybrid, and you can see that by comparing this shape to the shape of the bonding orbital. The antibonding combination here has a node between the nuclei right here, and is colored yellow and green just to emphasize that it's empty. If we look at its occupancy back down in the table, it's darn close to zero. The raw results give us more insight into the contributions of the hybrid on carbon and the 1s orbital on hydrogen to each natural bond orbital. We can conclude, for example, that each CH sigma bonding orbital consists of 60% hybrid orbital on carbon and about 40% 1s orbital on hydrogen. The results at right show us those percentages of s and p character in the hybrids and coefficients describing how the atomic orbitals contribute to these hybrids. You can use the table of atomic orbitals above to correlate these numbers with the atomic orbitals, but just to save us the, the effort, I'll go ahead and say that this is the s orbital contribution. Here's one of the two p's, here's the second two p, 
and here's the third 2p, and you can see that all four of these contribute pretty much equally. The s and p contributions are darn near equal, they're all equal to 0.5, and this suggests sp3 hybridization, right? 25% s and 75% p character in this hybrid.